All right. So anyway, the, my drummer came to me and said, sing this scripture. And then the scripture was Proverbs 3. And, it said, and it, I just looked at it, and then I started going. Said we will write them on the day. Yeah. Ooh, I see y'all be on Instagram, huh? Y'all be so we really ought to write. Okay, let us sing the song, all right? Come on, let's go for it. Y'all gotta, we gotta find some energy. Come on. Write them. forever be fruitful indeed I am the way the truth and the light no one gets to the fire except that he comes through me yeah. so let not mercy, let not mercy. and truth say for Wow, well greetings family. Uh, it's such an honor to be able to come into your homes wherever you may be uh, just to share this word, this kingdom experience with you. Uh, I'm Pastor Ren and uh, we're looking forward to what God is going to do in this place. Uh, do me a favor, take somebody, tag somebody, tell them to tune in right now uh, to the kingdom experience. We are on and we're getting ready to go all the way up. That's right. I believe worship is going to be intense. The word is going to be insightful and impactful as we're doing part two uh, of a series entitled, Please Don't Underestimate Me. If you were blessed by the message last week, come on, type it there, type it there. If you are a person of intercession, a person of integrity, and a person of initiative, that's you. you you're like Jabez. Type it there. That's me, Pastor. I enjoyed it. Uh, whatever ministered to you last week, come on, type it there. Let us know. Uh, but we're ready to chat with you, those that are in the chat room. I want to say this to you. Uh, make sure you're inviting your friends, your loved ones. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, share it with somebody else. Uh, we want them to be encouraged and inspired uh, by the worshiping word as well. We're getting ready for our cyber hugs. We believe this with all of our heart that everybody deserves at least eight hugs a day. And so I'm going to ask you to indulge us. Those of you in the cyber sanctuary, come on. Let's get ready for our hugs. You ready? Number one, that's one. Yes, yes. Number two. Mm. Number three. Mm. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Mm. 
and number eight. Come on, hold me this time. Hold me, hold me. Don't let me go. Squeeze me. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, thank you for that, our friends. We love you and uh, missing hugging you, but I know it won't be like this always. It won't be like this always, but uh, thank you so much. We're getting ready to go deeper uh, into the worship experience, and uh, as we do, we want God to throw his weight around in this place. Would you pray with us? Father, we're asking now uh, that you show yourself strong in this place. God, throw your weight around. Throw your glory. Let your glory be felt like never before. Uh, as always, God, we want you to be seen above everything else. We place you as the center of attraction. And God, we're thanking you in advance for what you've already done. We're thanking you in advance for what you're doing right now. God, and we thank you for what you're going to do. God bless my brothers, my sisters, those that are watching. Wherever they're watching from, God, encourage them. Encourage them today. God, let this word charge them. Let this word challenge them. But more importantly, God, let this word change them. God, we thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for the deposit of your word being dropped into our spirit. And we thank you for changed lives. Thank you for saved souls. And thank you for healed bodies. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise. It's in your son, Jesus, the Christ name we pray. Come on, everybody in the cyber sanctuary, say amen. Listen, our worship arts ministry is coming to bless us. And we'll be right, right back uh, for the word. I love you.
family. Let's get into this word. I'm super excited. Uh, I believe it's going to charge you. It's going to challenge you. Uh, and most importantly, it's going to change you. Turn with us. We're going right back there. First Chronicles chapter four, verse number nine and ten. Uh, we're reading it out of the New King James Version because of the wording of the text. Uh, but first Chronicles four, verse nine and ten. Uh, listen, it's going to be on the screen for you. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called his name Jabez saying, because I bore him in pain. Verse number 10. And Jabez called upon the God of Israel saying, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from all evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him his request. Oh, my goodness. We're talking part two of please don't underestimate me. Come on. Would you type it in the comments there? Don't underestimate me. Uh, let, let's, let's get into this lesson. Uh, I'll start off by saying each year, I believe in December around the 31st or January the 1st, we have vision board parties, we make New Year's resolutions, and we talk about things that we're going to stop, things that we're going to change, things that we're going to cut out. And then we take it a step further and we declare them <laughs> and we decree them. Uh, and what we're going to focus on, you know, our God giving goals. But let me say this, because we use this scripture sometimes to uh, as the foundation for some of our prayer requests. But, but, but this scripture prayer was made famous years ago by a gentleman by the name of Bruce Wilkerson. Uh, you remember Bruce Wilkerson who wrote, a, wrote a, a wonderful book on this prayer. It is the prayer of Jay Bez. And as I said last week, this particular prayer is probably the most memorable than the, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Yeah, yeah, I think this prayer here is more memorable because it represents a child that was born or a child who has a name, pain, that his mother gave him because of what she saw and what he caused her during childbirth. Uh, others suggest it was because his mother was forced to raise him without a father in the home. Uh, either way, I really believe that it is impossible to turn your pain into prayer without first being a prayer about your pain. Did, did you hear that? I think it's impossible to turn your pain into prayer without first being a prayer about your pain. We, we should refuse to let what didn't go right in 2020 stop us from being what God wants us to be in 2021. Uh, think about it this way. The man whose name was pain, the man who caused pain has the nerve to go to God and say, bless me. <laughs> Last week, we talked about the man, Jabez. This week, I want to deal with the prayer that he prayed. God answered him, as the Bible say, and he answered him because of who he was and not just what he prayed. I gave this kingdom nugget last week. I want to give it again this week and then we'll change the principles that I believe will bless you. And that was that God, think about this, the kingdom nugget, before God hears your words, he examines your heart. I said that last week, before God hears your words, he examines your heart heart. Let, let's look at the text. In, in, in verse number nine, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called his name Jabez saying, because I bore him in pain. The, the Bible says that his mother named him Jabez because she birthed him in pain. His name is pain. And he prayed to God and the God uh, that he prayed to answer pain. You miss it. His name was pain. He prayed to his God and God answered pain. His name was pain. Pain prayed and God answered pain. His life started off in pain. Every time his mother called his name, it reminded her of pain. But he didn't allow what his mother called him to be his destiny. I hope you're getting this in the cyber sanctuary. He did not allow what his mother named him to be the determining factor of whether or not he had a destiny. Can I give us principle number one? Write this one down. It'll be on the screen for you. God's power is greater than people's prognosis. 
God's power is greater than people's prognosis. What are you saying, Pastor? God will bless you in the face of your enemies. Yeah, Jabez says, I don't have to. I don't have but two words, God. I don't have but two words. I don't, I don't have but two words. I, I don't have, I don't understand uh, all the eloquent uh, words that we use during prayer. I don't understand how to cry out uh, before you. All I have is two words, and the two words I want to pray to you is bless me. Oh, my goodness. My question is, how does Jabez pray this prayer when his mother calls his name pain every time? How, how, how does he muster up the strength, the energy, the, 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 the willpower to pray, bless me, when every time he hears his name, it's associated with pain? Think about this. There have been times that I wouldn't bless me because I don't think I deserve God blessing me. I'm just talking about me. You, you, you may be different. I know you, you, you've been goody, goody two shoes. Uh, yeah, yeah, you've never made a mistake. But sometimes when I get some of the blessings of God, I'm saying, God, but I don't deserve this myself. I don't think I would bless myself with this. But, but you've been so kind and good to me. And here is what I want to say, because one scholar suggests that Jabez goes to God because he's going beyond his pain. What well, one scholar suggests, Jabez was actually saying, if you can use anything, God, I know you can use me. He says, if you can shout, it's only because you understand that you've made some mistakes. You understand that you had some hiccups along the way. You understand you haven't lived a perfect life. And what you're saying in essence is, God, if you can use anybody, please use me. Now, I want to talk to somebody that's saying, Pastor, I, I, I understand what Jabez feel because I've made some mistakes. I've, I, yeah, 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 I've done some things I'm ashamed of. I've I've been in relationships I'm not proud of. I've I've said some things that I know hurt God, but but I'm still praying the same prayer. God, if you can use anything, if you can use anybody, don't allow the mistakes of my past to stop you from using me. Jabez says, God, bless me. I knew I didn't grow. I know I didn't grow up in the right family. I know my daddy wasn't there. I know my mama called me low down every time she called my name. She called me pain but I want you to do something for me that nobody else sees or thinks that's possible bless me is it anybody in the cyber sanctuary that's bold enough to type it there God bless me yeah I, I made all the wrong mistakes I, I did all the wrong things but I'm still saying God bless me yeah, yeah, God, God, God haven't found a reason to bless me yet, but in spite of, he keeps on blessing me. God help me talk. Is that anybody's testimony that I can't even find a reason for him to bless me? But he, in spite of, he keeps on blessing me. So, so if God is blessing you in spite of you, can I give you some advice? Stop trying to explain to people that really don't understand your God why you are so blessed. That's why I shout the way I shout. That's why I scream the way I scream. That's why I serve the way I serve. That's why I give the way I give because God blessed me in spite of me. Oh, God, God. J. J. Bez didn't, didn't give God stipulations on how to bless him. He, he, he wasn't settling for the hand that life dealt him. He goes to him and says, God, bless me. J. 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 Bez's mother named him pain, but he refused to settle for what she named him. He, he didn't say, I guess I deserve everything that's coming to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J. Bez didn't say it must be karma. Yeah, yeah, I'm so sick of hearing people every time I go around. It's, it's calm. Karma is something, Pastor. Calm. Karma is a, uh-huh, you know what I'm talking about. Karma has a way of coming back. Listen, Jabez says, I, my mama said this. My family grew up this way. I, my brothers was gangsters, but God bless me. Yeah, yeah, the believer should never say karma came back. No, 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 believers don't believe in karma. We believe in grace and mercy. Yeah, woo, God help me say that again. I felt that. We, we, we don't believe in karma. We believe in grace and mercy. That's why people don't like us sometimes because they've been waiting on karma to take place. Yeah, yeah, that's why people have an upset. They're upset at you because they're waiting on karma to take place when every time they turn around, it ain't karma that's showing up, it's favor. They're waiting on karma to show up, but favor keep popping up. Yeah, they're, they're waiting on you to go through more pain, but favor keeps popping up. What are you saying, Pastor? Principle number two, write this down. Refuse to sit on the seat of the sanctified mediocrity. 
I want to say that again. Refuse to sit on the seat of the sanctified mediocrity. May make sense of this. Look at verse number 10. And Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Here it is. And enlarge my territory. Jabez doesn't tell God what to bless. He doesn't say bless my house. Bless my money. Bless my car. He says, I'm going to leave the details to you, God, because you know what to give me. Oh, God, help me talk. He says, I'm going to leave the details to you because you know what I need. I'm just saying, bless me indeed. And whatever you bless me with, enlarge my territory so that I can handle your blessing. Can, can, can I talk in a practical way to somebody? Have you ever been at the place where you're saying, I'm so sick of telling God what I want. I'm old enough and mature enough now to know Sometimes when I'm choosing from a fleshly standpoint, it's flawed. Yeah, I got some issues. I thought I wanted this, but then when I got it, I said, God, you can have them back. Yeah, I thought I wanted to work here. And once I got there, I realized it was more hell there than where I was. See, see, see sometimes you got to mature to get to the point where you say, God, I'm not going to give you the details this time. I'm just going to say, bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Oh, look at this. He says, I'm leaving the details to you, and I'm saying, God, I want you to bless me in DE. So, so instead of getting on social media, making a longer list of goals and, and a longer, a, a long laundry list of what you want God to do this time, just write down two words, bless me. Can I talk to somebody? Instead of making a long laundry list of what you need God to do, how you want him to do it, I dare you to just get on social media today and just type it in there, bless me. What, what are you saying, God? I want you to bless me. Yes, God is going to bless somebody with the husband that they want this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is going to bless somebody with the wife they've been praying for this year. Yeah, God is going to bless somebody with the car they've been wanting to drive this year. He's going to bless somebody with the uh -huh, with, 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 with the furniture that they've been praying for this year. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Ren? You don't have to pray for somebody else's. You can pray, God, give me my own. Oh, my God. Can I say it again? You don't have to pray for somebody else's. Just thank God that he's going to bless you with your own. I, I never will forget shopping at Walmart. Y'all know Wally World is one of my favorite stores. I, uh, at, at, at Walmart. And what I've learned during the holidays is you can be in Walmart in a long line. And you can look up there just to see. You know, they got 750 registers and only three cashiers. And, and sometimes you're in the line just looking, just seeing, just trying to see when is your turn to move up but here is what i found out as long as you stay in line your turn will come can i talk to somebody in the cyber sanctuary the problem is we're praying god bless me but then we get out of line yeah, yeah, I'm saying, God, I want to be next, then I get out of line. But, but God is saying in this season, if you really want me to bless you, stay in line and wait your turn. Because if you can stay in line, you can stay in faith and keep serving me, your time will come. God, help me talk. So come on, write it down, write it down. Jabez says through this prayer, I know that my life is worth more than pain. I, I know that my life is, is worth more than what they've been telling me. I, I know my life is worth more than what I've been settling for. And, and I'm saying, God, I want you to bless me indeed. Come on, write this down. He says, bless me and enlarge my territory. Can I give us principle number three? Write it down. I need you to get this. Come on, principle number three. Write this down. It's going to bless you. Stop praying small prayers. God, I feel like preaching now. Oh, somebody need to give me the hand here, Mike. I feel like preaching now. Look, look at it. Stop praying small prayers. Look at what he says in verse number 10. It's going to be on the screen for you. Bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Jabez says, bless me, two words, big time. So some, somebody type it in the comment, big time, big time. Don't, don't just give me a one-car garage, God. Give me a two-car garage. Don't, don't just give me a two-car garage, God. Give me a three-car garage. J Jabez says, bless me big time. So if, listen at this, if I'm going to stop praying small prayers, I must stop hanging around small-minded people. I must stop talking to small-minded people. I, I must stop thinking small. I must stop acting small because when God get ready to bless you and enlarge your territory, he's going to do it. Somebody shout it big time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jabez says, bless me. Then I think about this because bless me is in the future tense. Enlarge is in the present tense. Oh, God, I got to preach it. I got to preach it. Listen, bless me is in the future tense. But enlarge is in the present tense. In, in essence, what Jabez was saying was, God, enlarge my space for something big time so that the blessing you have for me in the future, I can handle it. Mm. Can I talk to a single person that's looking at me? This is why you need to take this time in this season to enlarge your territory, enlarge everything there is about you. So when your blessing does come, you got the capacity to handle it. Oh, he says, expand my capacity to receive what you have for me. Capacity speaks of preparation. Can, can I talk to somebody in the cyber sanctuary? Would you type it right there? and somebody inside go ahead and tell somebody I need a little more space Woo. yeah 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 what do you say I need a little more space I'm, I'm saying God bless me in the future but enlarge me right now so, so, so in other words I'm big enough and I'm bold enough to say I'm gonna go buy the house with no furniture I'm going to go buy the work clothes and I don't have a job yet. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stop reading books uh, on how to deal with depression and I'm going to start reading books on how to be a successful wife. I'm going to start reading books on how to make money work for me and my wife. I'm, I'm going to start doing things in the future, preparing myself in the present for what God has for me in the future. Can I say this? If you want God to bless you in the future, you got to prepare yourself in the present. Uh, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. C -c Come on, here it is. Write it down, write it down, write it down. I need you to get this. Get, get, get this. It's going to be a kingdom principle. I want you to get this. I know you're saying, Pastor, you usually give us three principles. Yeah, I'm going to give you four today. I need you to get this one. Get rid of capacity killers. Let me say that again. Get rid of capacity killers. People like to stay in small places. Uh, see, see, these people want to keep you in small places, but they, 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 they want to keep you in small places so they can kill your dreams. And, and they, yeah, they, they want to keep you in a small space called a small cubicle. When, when God says you're the vice president, he, he, he says you're going to be the owner, but they want to keep you single. When God says, I see marriage all over you, I see health at home, health at family all over you, but, but they want to keep you in certain spaces, but you got to be bold enough to get rid of capacity killers. God, I, is there anybody other than me that's bold enough to type it there? I need some more space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I need some more play. I need some more space, God. I, I, come on, be bold enough. I know I'm in an apartment now, but I need some more space. I know I'm in a three-bedroom house, but I need some more space. Yeah, I'm saying to God, now give me more space so that I can do what you call me to do. Come on, look at verse number 10. Look at verse number 10. We're almost done. For verse number 10, he says, that your hand would be upon me to keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. Jabez says, when you bless me, keep me from doing to somebody else what somebody else did to me. He says, don't let me get so big, God, that I forget the pain that was that was placed on me and I start projecting it on somebody else. He says, God, let me be bigger than that. Let, let me be more spiritual than that. Can, can, can I tell somebody this and I need you to write this down? Here's your kingdom shout. Here's your kingdom shout. Write it down. He says, don't let the blessing distract me from my destiny. Mm. God says, I'm getting ready to give you the house. But don't let the house distract you from the real destiny. I'm getting ready to give you the man you prayed for. But don't let the man distract you from destiny. I'm, I'm getting ready to give you the car you've been wanting. But, but don't let it distract you from destiny. Because if you let it distract you, you will start doing to other people what other people did to you. And sometimes you're unaware of it. You got to stay focused on me so that when the blessing come, you keep seeking me and not the blessing. Oh, my God, can I tell somebody this? And you need to type it in the comments. I'm too busy getting ahead to waste time getting even. Yeah, yeah. I know my baby daddy.
dad had left me. I, I know he ain't paid child support in 12 years, but I'm not going to stop that. I'm not going to allow that to stop me from raising my son. I'm not going to let it stop me from raising my daughter. I'm going to keep him in court. I'm not going to be no fool, Pastor, but I'm not going to talk bad about him. I'm not going to dog his family out. I'm going to keep on moving forward because I'm too busy getting ahead to waste time getting even. Do you feel what I'm saying today? Even on the job, you know they didn't want you to get the promotion. You know they didn't want you to take over that office space, but you've got to be too busy getting ahead to waste time getting even when God is blessing you and he's blessing you indeed. You don't need capacity killers on your team. You don't need capacity killers in your in circle of influence. You've got to say, God, enlarge my territory. And I'm saying to God, now any way you bless me, God, I'm going to be satisfied. Don't just give me one house. Give me two houses. God, don't just give me one car. Give me three cars. Don't just pay my bills. Help me to pay somebody else's bills. Somebody type it there. Enlarge my territory. Yeah, We're we not praying small prayers this year. We're going to pray big prayers. God, don't just let my son go to school. Don't just let my daughter go to school, but let them go on a full ride. Big prayers. Uh, listen, I, 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 my prayer is that this two-part series has blessed you. Uh, don't underestimate me. You need to be telling your friends that, telling your spouse, <laughs> tell, telling your coworkers, whatever you do, uh, don't underestimate me. God has been too good to me, and uh, I refuse to allow with you place or the limit you place to keep me limited did you hear that i refuse to allow the limits you place on me to keep me limited uh, but we're going to tell everybody don't underestimate me uh, thank you all for your time we are out of time and uh, we're getting ready to sow so we can go together grab your seed uh, get your seed together you know what is your seed your seed is a picture of your faith that's right it's a picture of your faith uh, it's a tangible expression of your faith uh, in God, who he is, and what he means to you. I want you to get a seed in your hand. As you're getting your tithe, uh, we, can't, we can't debate that 10% of our increase belongs to God. Uh, it belongs to God. I've taught this so many times. Whenever we tithe, we give reverence to Christ. Uh, it brings resources to the local church, and then it brings rewards to my house. The, the reason we do that is because God says, I want me in my house. He wants to be able to do those things that we do existentially, as far as feeding the hungry. Uh, visiting those that are in prison, helping the widows, helping those uh, that are in need. And I believe your seed helped us to meet those needs. And so I want to thank you to every Kingdom Covenant partner that uh, souls into the ministry. Uh, it's such an honor for you to do that and we're grateful to God uh, for every seed that you sow. Go ahead, get your tie together. We're going to give our seed an assignment today and we're going to be leaving this place together. Come on, let's declare some things over our seed. If you will, once you've gotten it together, say with me, I'm a tither. I gladly take the tithe out of my house and bring them into the storehouse. Come on, say this with me. Today, I confess the windows of heaven blessings over my life. I, I'm a cheerful giver. I give to the work of God and to the man of God. And because I do so, my God shall supply all of my needs. Come on, say this with me. This week, I expect unexplainable blessings. Come on, say it with me. Say favor is on my life. But where is it coming from? Say favor from the north, favor from the south, favor from the east, and favor from the west. Say, God, give me favor with somebody that can bless me. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, go ahead and sow. Go ahead and sow those that are giving. Uh, the information is on the screen for you. While you're doing that, we're preparing to go together. Those that are giving, you can keep doing so. Uh, but Father, thank you for this opportunity to worship together uh, with your people. We rebuke death, accidents, and incidents. Allow us to make it to our destination safe and sound, God. We thank you for the glory that we felt in this place. Now, as we leave, God, be that unseen guest in the car with us. And we thank you for making us people of integrity, people of initiative, and then people of intercession. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in your son, Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen, take this word, apply it to your life, and let's go build the kingdom one person at a time. I love you, and we're praying for you. Let's build.
speak. Come on, SOV, say. We will fight. And we will win. And we will win. We speak victory. We speak victory to every trial we win. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. No longer defeated. No longer defeated. But we're winners now. We're winners. Clap your hands right here. Come on, SOV. Let's go, baby.